Welcome back. This time we're going to talk about writing functions. Uh, the idea is that you already know the concepts of functions, either from MATLAB or some other language. So we're really just going to focus on the syntax that C uses. All right, so <clears throat> first we'll talk about uh, in C, you have to kind of declare a function twice, which is annoying. Uh, you have to declare its prototype, which is typically like up near the top. Um, and then you have to declare the actual function itself. Uh, so what these things look like is up at the top, you've got a prototype, uh, which ends in a semicolon. That's kind of the main thing. Uh, and then down later in the code, you've got the actual definition of the function. On both of these, you say in front uh, what it's going to return. Uh, so this little sample function returns nothing. Um, and then you also say uh, what it receives. Uh, so this function return or this function receives nothing, which is void. You'll notice a small difference of you're required to say void in the prototype, but it's optional down below. Take your pick, right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and start up a new project. Uh, so I'm going to open MPLab. You may already have a project uh, from earlier. I'm actually just going to start a new one, uh, just because it'll be uh, be easier to keep it clean. So standalone project, uh, pick 18F4520, and I'm going to choose to do uh, this one with the simulator. So that's kind of why I wanted to make a new project, just because it could use the, uh, the simulator and have a nice clean separation. So we'll call it writing functions. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to make a new template file, which I will call writing functions C. And to be honest, there's a lot of things in here that we don't really need. If you want to keep them, that's fine. There's no harm in them. Uh, but we're not using a real device. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could kind of blow away all the stuff that's in main, uh, and that'd be fine. The main thing I wanted to show you here just to kind of start with is you can see that there is an area for local function prototypes uh, called local function. Um, and there is an area at the bottom uh, for the actual declaration of those functions. Now this one is simple. It receives no parameters. It returns no parameters. Uh, but you can do a lot more, of course. Any parameters that you receive uh, go in the parentheses that are on the right side of the function. Uh, so here you can see the first one received a variable that was an integer. The second one received a variable that was a char. And you can also return things. Uh, this is a, a slightly better example. Um, usually you, you do stuff with what's sent in. You don't just modify it directly. Because if you modify it directly, what was the point of sending it in? The other thing that you need to know about functions is that they can return things. Uh, the return type is always lifted, listed to the left of the function. Uh, so you say what type it's going to return. And then at some point in the function itself, you say return y. Um, and y better be matching the type that you said you were going to return. Uh, so that's kind of how returns work. You always return exactly one item, which is kind of a limitation of C. There are ways around it, but um, we're not going to talk about pointers. Um, so you return one thing, but you can pass in as many things as you would like. Uh, so in this example here, we're actually passing in three different floats. So we're passing in a bunch of things. Um, and then we're returning uh, just one float. MATLAB has a feature for where you can return a matrix doesn't exist. Uh, so you can return one thing. I also chose this example to show you one other little difference between the prototype and then the actual function. If you would like, this is optional, the prototype um, just has to say the type. Um, it doesn't have to say the name of the variable. Uh, so it doesn't have to say the formal name. So there's those two little differences. Um, the first one was that you had to say void up here. Um, and then the other difference is that the name uh, is optional up here. There's no harm in having the name, but it is optional. All right, so let's go ahead and do an example. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to create a function. Uh, this function is going to be called add two numbers. Um, it kind of looks like there's a space in my slide there, but there's no space there. Um, so add two numbers is going to be the name. It's going to receive two ints, uh, one called A, the other called B. Um, and then it's going to return an int 
uh, which is simply the sum of A plus B. Um, so see if you've got enough knowledge uh, to where you could just below the sample function, you could write it um, and see if you could make a prototype for it as well. So see if you can do it, then I'll do it with you. All right, so I'm going to do it as well. Uh, so far in this guy up, what I want to do here is I want to return an int, um, and my function name is going to be add two numbers. It's going to receive an int a and an int b, um, and all it's going to do is it's just going to return a plus b. So that's the function. Uh, let's go see if we can define a prototype for it. Um, you can see that I don't have to say the name of the variable, but I actually find it easier just to copy paste it up there. So uh, there's the function. So there's add two numbers. So next up is how do we actually use it uh, and how do we make sure that it works. Uh, let's uh, just go ahead and declare some variables here. We'll just um, we'll make one variable Bob, the other one Dave. I can't do it. I can't make them uppercase. I'm going to make them lowercase. And result. And we're just going to say that result. Um, oh. <laughs> it was yelling at me about my uh, spacing. It's because I don't have a semicolon at the end. I was like, what on earth? Uh, now it formats better. It's kind of nice that if the um, indentation is off, then there's probably something wrong here. So if we said Bob and Dave uh, and then result. So what I could do here is I could go ahead and run this. Um, it's a simulator, so it's not going anywhere. Um, and then I could pause it, because surely it's run it by now. And in the variables area, uh, I could see what these values are. Um, oh, I suppose I should give a value for Bob and Dave to make the example more fun. So Bob will make two, and Dave will make three. And so if we run it here uh, and then pause it, um, we can see that our variables window is showing us um, Bob and Dave and result. Um, so you can see that our function works. The point was that I just wanted to show you the syntax for how you call this function. It's pretty simple. It works just like other languages. And to be honest, I, I just did the, the temporary names just so you could see them. Uh, the syntax gets a little easier, uh, in fact, if you just kind of leave those out. I just put them in so that they would show up in, in the variables window. Uh, so if I run it now, hit pause, uh, it should say result is 9. Again, just to mention it, there's always a chance that the compiler will try to outsmart you um, and, and something might go wrong. Um, and so sometimes it's worthwhile to say that something's volatile. Um, also, sometimes the debugger works better with global variables, so sometimes I put it up in the global area. All right, so that's add two numbers. And so there's the example there, um, and then there's the simplified syntax. Um, and that's all we've got this time. I'll see you next time for another example. All right.